Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast. CF mutations, nonsense, or stop mutations, such as G542X. This webcast is hosted by the foundation and supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. To learn more about CF research, genetics, lung health, nutrition, and how to avoid germs in CF, please watch an archived webcast on the Foundation's website. Joining me is Dr. Peter Mogazel, the CF Center Director at the Johns Hopkins CF Care Center in Baltimore, Maryland. He's going to help you understand how this mutation causes cystic fibrosis. Welcome, Peter. Well, thank you for having me, Leslie. Before we talk about this specific mutation, I'd like to talk to you about how cystic fibrosis affects the body. CFTR is caused by a mutation in the CFTR gene, which encodes for a chloride transporter that sits at the surface of cells. When it's defective, there's abnormal salt and water transport in and out of cells, which affects mucus wherever your body makes mucus. In the lungs, this thick, sticky mucus blocks the small airways and allows bacteria that we all breathe in to become trapped in the airways. This leads to inflammation and airway damage. It also affects the sinuses, where that same mucus leads to recurrent infections. In the sweat duct, sodium and chloride are not reabsorbed, so that the amount of salt in the sweat is elevated. And this is used as a diagnostic test for cystic fibrosis. The GI tract, comprised of pancreas, intestines, and liver, are also affected in CF. About 80% of patients with cystic fibrosis will have pancreatic insufficiency, because the small ducts in the pancreas are blocked and destroyed and pancreatic enzymes are not produced to digest food. Severe liver disease can occur in a small percentage of patients with cystic fibrosis as well. Finally, there can be male infertility. This is caused by absence of the vas deferens, which is similar to having a vasectomy. Before we go on to talk about the specific mutation, I'd like to focus in, on the lungs in a little bit more depth. I have a video to show you which has what we call mucociliary clearance, which is clearance of the mucus out of the airway by cilia that line the surface epithelium. Here you see the normal airway with normal cells beating and moving mucus out of the airway. Now in the cystic fibrosis airway, the mucus is thick and sticky and actually smushes the airway epithelial cell in the cilia. This is caused by abnormal chloride transport, which is shown here in CFTR in yellow, which isn't transporting any chloride, and excessive sodium reabsorption which is shown here in green. This is the problem in the airway that leads to airway inflammation, infection, and damage. Peter, what is a nonsense or stop mutation in CF? A nonsense mutation is one where no protein is produced. I have a video that'll help explain that. Um, what you'll see here is a RNA molecule. And sitting on the RNA molecule, shown here in yellow, is a ribosome, that blue and red ball in the middle. It moves down the RNA to make the protein, and that's what you'll see coming out at you as we move forward. As it moves forward, though, instead of being a normal code, there'll be a stop codon shown here in red. And when the ribosome hits that, it stops and breaks apart. No protein is made, and the RNA is degraded early. In this case, no protein is made, and therefore that's what causes cystic fibrosis. One could imagine a therapy where a drug could bind to the ribosome and allow it to read through that stop codon and make a full-length protein. Brick, can you show the next video which illustrates that? You'll see the same RNA and ribosome here. Once it moves forward and hits the stop, it's activated by a new drug. Rick, can you go ahead and start this? So here the protein is being made. It hits the stop. Now a drug comes which activates it and allows it to read through the stop codon. A protein is made and gets to the cell surface and will function to transport chloride and regulate sodium transport. Leslie, I hope this has been helpful in explaining this mutation. Thank you, Peter. Very much appreciate trying to help the community understand this mutation. I encourage you to talk with your CF Care Center to learn what your or your child's mutations are. You can learn more about CF research and the drug development for specific mutations on the Foundation's website under Quick Links, click Drug Development Pipeline. This concludes the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast on CF mutations. I would like to thank you for watching. 
Peter for explaining this mutation, Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Genentech for their unrestricted educational grant, and the CF Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you.